Hello, Internet. I am Jackie Fox, and today we're going to talk about the units that are going to be reincarnated within the first two months of the system going live. And I've done a couple of restrictions. You can see my filters over here. I'm not including like super low rarity tier units. I'm also excluding 65 cost and 60 cost units. Because in my mind, anything 80 cost and below is limited bait. And most of the good, like the, the best, the ones that you really want are at 50 cost. MR units that require you to put an extra 10 or even on a very, very awkward 15 because there's never been a cost limit that had a 5 at the end. Um, these are just, I, I just, just don't make me explain any further why these aren't listed here. Um, because even with that, uh, despite what this says up here, <laughs> um, there are 53, actually, I guess another way of saying this is that out of the uh, 99 units that fit these qualifications, 53 of them receive an update post Dream Enhancement. And yes, for a couple of these characters, and off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure which, but I think I can pick them out. Um, some of these are just them getting MA2s. It's not actually a Dream Enhancement thing. But this is what the two first months of this system are going to look like for us when you remove all of the limited characters. Like, brand new units, of course, that come out after this are going to be, um, you know, of course, they're going to fit the qualifications. And I'm just going to skip Prince Mont already. Prince Mont always gets the first awakening when we come into new things, so that's kind of expected. He's good. He's free. He's easy to build. You probably have an enormous amount of mind spheres for him. Um, worthy consideration for MR, uh, especially because I think the MR tanks actually do really well with the Dream Incarnation uh, system. And he's a really good one if you are Earth or if you're like running some sort of a trap scenario that involves Earth. That's a good character. Uh, Kingmont, let's look at him just for a second. Ooh. Oh no, now I'm confused because I thought the thing... Okay, right. This is the upgrade. Um... The skill that you're always going to be using on him for defense, HP, and hate, of course. He's a tank. He's a defensive tank. Tanks need HP. There's no reason not to run this buff already. But it will also give him an auto cast of restore HP for self uh, once he hits 50% HP, which is great. That's that, that really brings him into modernity with tanks. So I think he's especially an interesting one. And Fire has a lot of powerful potential going into the future, so he's a good first pickup for Fire players for your Fire uh, Awakened team. What happened here? I feel as though... I release date. Oh, updated date. Okay, that's what I wanted. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I hope it doesn't do that every time. Um, I would, I would skip these two units for obvious reasons. What I actually think is more helpful, especially for these two units and some other units like them, is to, sparingly, because some of the resources, you want to bank a certain amount of resources in your, like, guild and friend medals for potentially buying awakening materials, especially, I think, for MR units, but you should also be spending daily on, like, Pick one from each metal shop and buy 10 of their shards every day. Because, and pick one that you're even, maybe even one that you're not planning to dream upgrade. Because then you're going to be able to trade, I think their mind spheres 2 to 1 for generic mind spheres that work for everyone. At least within dream enhancement, I think. So, maybe there's an argument for spending a lot and getting a shit ton of Mashery mind spheres. Just 10 a day. Um, and then trading hers over once you get into that system and then having someone on the other side, like maybe a Catone or Whisper. Whisper actually, it looks like she's going to be a pretty good unit, 
Um, that is one that I'm probably most excited for. Oberon, I expressed some uh, excitement for him. Whisper, though, she is in a much better element, and she's going to be working with Sephiroth, who's going to be one of the big guns of this new era, as he always is whenever he's released into an FFBE game. Uh, water players are going to be really excited, especially water magic players, for Amnilis. She is quite powerful, another new unit. But um, I think Catone, I feel like Catone got a pretty good upgrade. Magic and Missile Resistance. She can now increase healing power for herself <clears throat> with the with debilitator, in addition to lowering their healing power, which is becoming increasingly, you know, interesting. And that was already a power of this attack, um, but also that means that it now combos into drain force very very nicely. I'm gonna have to resort them again, aren't I? Yeah. Is what it is. Okay. Speeding on through. Uh, oh, yeah, because, yeah. Okay, so she's coming soon. As in, she's coming next week in Global, but she's going to be getting a reincarnation uh, around the time that they start releasing some of the first... Well, I... You know, pretty much, he came out before this too. He got updated here as well. So they're going to come out once they start releasing the antagonist from the series, which are going to be the first uh, warrior or whatever of the Void to start. Um, in the 140 system. So let's keep moving on. Um, if you like Gunners, these ladies can be interesting. Luartha being notable because she's free. Although I think I like Lucia better. But I don't think that either of them got really amazing from this. Although, this is the point where we start getting into some characters that um, aren't older characters getting updates. But are actually newer characters that are getting pretty big updates. I'm... Uh, underwhelmed in some ways by Queen Masheries, but any addition to a unit this new is going to be a huge upgrade for them and make them pretty powerful, which pretty much follows up my thoughts for Dark Fina. I'm actually excited for Dark Fina more, and, you know, just like what I was saying... <laughs> yeah, God. Just like what I was saying about Oberon and Whisper, I think that of the two of these... Uh, Dark Fina is going to be the more relevant because, again, she's on a team with Sephiroth, potentially. She's on a team with Whisper, potentially. Although, if you are an Earth player, you do have Rurugia, um, you do have Queen Mashiri, and you do have Oberon at this point. So you do have a 140 potential um, Earth team within, like, a month of the system starting. Uh, Renan, from what I've heard, stays... Ba a 90 cost unit and a 100 cost body or I'm sorry a 100 cost unit and a 90 cost body whatever How however that works he doesn't get better um, I don't think I've looked at Setia's actually defense pin initial AP up okay what's the upgrade out of curiosity Decrease critical rate for people hit with this pretty large AoE. Um, being able to turn off critical is actually probably getting more and more powerful as more and more units are becoming critical based and more and more units are uh, more and more equipment or effects or stuff. And the blood sword uh, in JP, which is pretty much brand new now. Um, but heavily based on critical, that can really counterplay that a lot of that stuff really well. So I like that idea. Let's see, who else can we talk about? 
Ooh, big big juries out on this. B- best design in the game. I think as a light player, I'm going to have to pull him on my light account just to have him as my fucking showpiece unit on my home screen. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be a unit that I actually care about or really want to invest in super hard, but I think he, I think he has a cool design. I mean, look look at this look at this dude. Look at my boy. Look at that shit. He's got a wing of swords, except that you know, in red and black, it looks almost even more brutal than Gilgamesh, who has the same thing going on in blue. He's like. You know, Gilgamesh is a god in this world, and like the the recent intermission quest has like made that really, because you because you think like coming in as an FFBE player, he's like he's not really a god. I mean, yeah, he's like immortal because of technology and cool armor and stuff, but he's not really a god. And then we get into the intermission, and you're like, holy shit! Not only is he basically the god of this world. Sodley is functionally becoming a god too, which was another one of those things where it was like self proclaimed god. Yeah, of course a holy man would say that, but like no. No, he he he's wow. Um Immortality really does some shit in a world where you learn magic gradually over time. Jaden Rundle might be pretty good. Um I think that his upgrade is generally beneficial for him, but kinda meh. He's also already kind of a situational unit. So, you know, this may not be your main... It may not be a very... And and you know what? In, in some ways, I think gunners in general have this issue in that they're kind of map dependent. And with 140 requiring a big investment of resources, I'm not sure I would be going for missile units right off the bat very much. Um... Gilgamesh gets upgraded Kotetsu. It's the one move you wanted him to use anyways, so that's pretty cool. Um, (laughs) Uriel is pretty new. I'm... Oh, no, and she... She becomes more of a missile resistance unit. She's already a great rushdown unit. She has some uh, move-to-target panel stuff. So if you want somebody to be able to run into gunfire and punch the shit out of people Uriel is probably just as good at maybe just as good as Raldor at that if not in some ways better um even though Raldor has well I mean I guess lightning missile is a thing but anyways um Raldor might be a little bit more useful in some ways but Uriel definitely looking like a good earth unit if you're trying to fight especially like lightning missile this girl might be a good choice oh wait rugia only uh, uh, god damn it release date again okay okay we're back this is an ma2 i'm pretty sure yes i think so and (laughs) engelbert being one of the first units released i believe hold on release date 2019 god damn this unit is almost four years old and he is only getting his ma2 and he is still coming back into the meta and still remaining in the meta engelbert is the wall that will not quit he is the unstoppable force of of ffb and that's why i bring him up in this video even though he didn't get a dream enhancement, just 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 so you know. And his sub jobs getting upgraded too are gonna to be a big thing for him. Reagan, another one of our brawlers that gets um HP back. Uh Lucio. Lucio I think is actually probably a really cool one to look at because he's gonna be completely free still, even into this system. There's gonna be an additional set of uh things for you to beat and as you beat it you're going to get ap consumption down and aoe resistance both those things are really great for him let's see what the skill upgrade is damn it i didn't look too hard at that uh hopefully it's okay cool so his oh boy wait actually it does two things so first Three turns, slash attack resistance penetration, 40 for self, before dealing damage. 
on his biggest AOE, you know, like when you run in, like as a new player or as a basic player or as just any player with this being a free unit, if you ever have those challenges where you have to kill multiple units, this is a great character on a like a free light team to do that with, and this is a great skill for it. Getting him slash attack resistance penetration down for three turns, but also happening before the damage, is going to be huge for the for him. You know, moving on in that fight, of course, because a lot of these effects only work for one turn, and this works for three. But it also happens before the damage, which helps ensure you get that three kills out of your attack. And the survivors are also going to be losing, in addition to bravery, they're going to be losing their AP as well. So this is this is uh, Locke's AP hunt, like, but refined by AI into the perfect killing machine of an attack for what we could expect for a free character. I'm not going to say that this like breaks the bank, this is the best Bangorous ability ever, but... If you want to kick a lot of ass, this ability looks like it could do it. Although I want to say that, you know, it does seem to be a trend that AoE resistance is becoming a lot more common. So maybe attacks like that won't be as good by the time it gets to us. At least against certain teams. But, uh, damn! Velus. Velus is probably a usable support up to the point that he got his dream enhancement in JP. So the fact that he got a dream enhancement that, for one, that cast time reduction is fucking awesome. Uh, critical evasion? Meh. I mean, a lot of, again, a lot of things activate through criticals, so that's pretty good. Uh, that is actually kind of helpful. And then let's look at what this upgrade is. I don't think it was that. Oh. Oh. So now his big ass heal that comes with AP that like this heal is what makes him arguably the best support in the game, even at 120 going up against 140 characters in, in many cases. And now it has uh, basically AOE vitality or a AOE vitalized. And the reason that that's important is that this is so there's two ways to raise agility in this game in battle there's vitalize which is uh, a green mage skill and there is haste which is a time mage skill this is basically wide aoe vitalize which is actually really similar to what slime can do when you fully upgrade him and the reason that that's important especially for this character is oh where did it go yes he can also grant haste and he's also one of the most effective units at granting haste like lemure i don't know i've seen lemure standing in formation with three with two other units she cast hasteka and then runs out of formation hasting only the other two and she could have gotten herself so the fact that he can haste two units is pretty good and the fact that he does that reliably every every cast, except for, you know, past the first, because he's giving himself haste again. But really, that just refreshes his haste, so that's not the worst. But maybe you don't want him doing this a lot. But it means that in two casts, he can get your whole team every time, um, if you want him supporting that way. But haste is a completely different thing than vitalize. So what, what happens is, say he hastes a character, and then they take some damage, and then he heals them... They're getting a combined, and I'm not sure exactly how the math works with this, but let's just say it's additive. They get a combined 67% additional agility because those two agility boosting things stack. I think this is going to crack out some teams. Like It's just going to be a powerful set of support steroids on that character that's, that's probably going to be pretty fucking cool. And uh, Chunok maybe becomes a character that makes sense into the future, as I've heard. Uh, Velric also starts to make sense as a character. He gets a uh, Drain Rush enhancement, healing power up in a lot of his stuff. So he's becoming a much more consistent, if you can't take me down, I will heal myself back with your health characters. Um, Eliza is already powerful and probably powerful going into this, so anything that she gets is going to make her awesome. 
And then we got Astrius and Joom, which I could basically say the same thing about. They've been great units since they came out, and Dream Enhancements are only going to make them continually awesome units. Like, I don't even think I need to talk about what they get, although I do want to look at Joom because I felt like it might be cool. Elemental Chain Resistance and Single Target Resistance. Just amazing for a tank. I, I love this. I'm not even going to look at the skill upgrade. It, it doesn't matter. If you have these units... Throw them in the barracks, um, do daily quests for them. None of the units that I've chosen to showcase today are limited, so they're all units that you can do both of those things for. Obviously, for characters from here up, since this is going through time, you know, these are going to be the ones that are getting released first, so if you really have your heart set on King Mont, you definitely want to get started now. But let's say if you are saving for a character where we have maybe four months to save for, like Velus or Joom or Astrius, you could get started now. Or maybe you could work on somebody in the meantime or build something else up. You've, you've got some time before these are going to be coming out. But they are worth being aware of that like four months down the line, there's going to be a resurgence of Astrius and definitely Velus and almost certainly Joom and Lucio as well. So, um, in fact, I, I really feel like this upgrade potentially makes Lucio an even, like, he. I already had the argument that Lucio was a 90 cost unit. But this kind of makes him a 95 cost unit, I think. And the fact that he remains completely free is just awesome. So those are my thoughts on the characters that we know that are coming so far. And I'm just now realizing that the last couple minutes of video cut out, but fuck it. Whatever, who cares? I hate Bandicam and their 10 minute limit on recording. If anybody knows good ways to record your screen for free, open source, that aren't bad, that don't have limitations like this, that can make making videos like this easier for me, please let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, happy pulls and good luck out there. But actually, don't pull that much and save for the stuff we're talking about in this video. But have fun, regardless.